Antarctica is the last place you would expect to find evidence of a mega tsunami event. But in this video, I'm going to show you the recent discovery I've made that I truly believe, without a shadow of a doubt, further corroborates the massive evidence that has already been presented in this series. So far, we've covered the undisputable mass of visual evidence left over from the 200 or so odd meter high mega tsunami that was generated by the Burgle Crater impact event 5,000 years ago. We've taken a deep dive into the evidence that exists all over Australia, with a detailed hour-long video that begins with an explanation of what the land looks like after a mega tsunami has torn through it, along with what it has left behind after it has retreated back to the sea, why these depositions are left, and how we can identify them. In this video, I'm going to show you the clear chevrons that exist en masse in Antarctica, which are still visible even 5,000 years after this event occurred. Like always, these chevrons and their direction line up perfectly with the location that the comet struck in a deep section of the Indian Ocean. This evidence only exists in areas that are directly in line with the collision point of the Burkle Crater impact. I will also be showing you guys what an unaffected portion of Antarctica looks like for some comparison, so that you can visualize what these areas looked like prior to this mega tsunami crashing into the icy shorelines of Antarctica. Whilst the idea to check out Antarctica did occur to me when I first began this series, I finally got around to it about a week ago, and, well, I was shocked. You can't make this out on Google Earth or Google Maps. This simulator, which uses accurate topographical data, is surprisingly the best tool to use for this event, as you can see here. The fact that these chevrons are so evident is surprising to me. I expected a complete burial of these sediments in this icy landscape, or at the very least, I expected some form of shrouding to occur, and in some places it has, mainly in areas where there are subsurface glacial rivers in flow. Yep, that's right, the rivers still do flow, and Antarctica has quite a large network of them. But in places where flowing water doesn't exist, the evidence is quite clear and staggering. There's little obstacles beyond topography that exist here. No trees to buffer the wave, with a relatively flat landscape to scale. As occurred many times in the Australia series, we see some areas that bore the brunt of the direct wave, which sheltered certain locations from the intense direct hit, whilst others that surrounded it that weren't protected clearly show a marked level of higher intensity, with it also absorbing much of the sediment too, leaving smaller chevron deposits behind in the area that did not absorb the direct impact, with it also absorbing much of the sediment too. So how do we know that this isn't just Aeolian processes? Antarctica does have some pretty strong wind currents that circulate it, and this process of wind-driven erosion, or the shifting or accumulating of sediments, is definitely one of the key players in regards to the shaping and visual features present on Antarctica's surface landscape. Here we will see a very familiar Aeolian type pattern. We normally see this type of thing in a desert, and well, Antarctica is a desert after all a very icy desert. So this is Antarctica as it was before this tsunami hit. You can very clearly see the directional aspect of the chevrons. We have flattened, unaltered, somewhat unremarkable land, dominated by horizontal or vertical windblown formations like this. And then all of a sudden, we have sediment accumulations, clearly left behind by this mega tsunami event. At this point in time, the evidence is kind of seeming very clear to me. I've tracked chevrons in a 360 degree direction from the epicenter of the Burkle Crater impact now. From Tasmania to Indonesia, west to India, then Pakistan, then Iran, before heading south and finding evidence in Oman and Yemen. After this, in Africa's Somalia, the clarity of the impact scales up, before peaking at Madagascar, with the largest chevrons occurring there. Evidence then recommences in South Africa, and after this, when we move to the southeast, we now have these ones in Antarctica. This episode was an impromptu release. I'll be finalizing this mega tsunami series in the next episode, where we'll travel from Indonesia all the way down to South Africa. And I hope you are as excited and fascinated over this as I am. This was truly an incredible find for me, and it absolutely blew me away. I'll be releasing a few different videos in the coming days, but the last episode to this Mega Tsunami series will be out soon, so stay tuned and I hope to see you guys there.
Thank you so much for watching and for sharing in the wonder of this discovery with me. Cheers guys.